Jumptron. Pokemon, a series dearly beloved by many. Few games can claim to harness its gravitational pull. This golden goose has sold millions upon millions of copies, spawned countless varieties of merchandise, and touched multiple generations of kids and adults alike. How many franchises do you know that bridge the generational gap? Now I know what you're probably thinking to yourself. Why are you telling me this? I've played them all. I've been to them all. I've been to Kanto, Johto, Ancho, Habanero, Poblano, Antonio Banderas. I swung them all, sister. Swung with the best. But you ain't never seen the likes of this. That's right. With every big fish, there's a leech on the belly. Today, we're gonna have a look at the fascinating world of bootlegged Pokemon games. Now, now, these aren't games you can find in stores. They're games that made their way into circulation one way or another. None of them are licensed or acknowledged by Nintendo, and they're pretty damn hard to find. First off, let's look at what's known as Pocket Monster. It's inferred that it was released in the year 2000 by DVS Electronics, because on the box art, there are two small icons reading New Game and 2000. Hey, it's not empirical science, but what can I tell you? I'm a simple man. It's strange. The label on my game says Pokemon Pikachu Edition, which first off isn't even the name of the game at hand, but if you peel back the label, there's another label that says Pikachu and it's spelled wrong? What is this game? Who made it and why? Look at this Pikachu. Seriously, is it any wonder why he's so popular? Even when he's half-assed and bootlegged, he still melts my heart. I can feel the money loosening from my wallet already. He's like, he's all like, fuck you. All right, I just, I gotta leave, okay? No, we just started, come on, man. We listen, just, listen, gotta... there's a lot to see in this life. Not wasting it here. Well, there's a shocker for you. Five seconds into the game and it's already like... <laughs> Look at his arms flailing. Even he's confused and terrified. Hey, I'm not blaming him, I would be too. Listen to this music. This is not level one music. Talk about putting the player on edge right away. This game is extremely hard to play. When Pikachu jumps, the entire game lags. Every. Single. Time. But then when you just want to go forward, he speeds up like a power walker with a New York minute to spare. So it's like you're constantly in a battle between game speeds. Makes the platforming real difficult right off the bat. Also, can we take a minute to talk about the fact that Pikachu has the face of a, a balding middle-aged man? Curly Howard, is that you? Did you come back? Did you come back from the ground, Mausoleum? Even more ridiculous than all that is his walk cycle. I mean, look at that thing! Coupled with the music, it's like a vaudeville act in here. Maybe it really is curly, because, I mean, they started as a vaudeville act back in 1925. But that's not that funny, though, because they're all dead. I thought they were supposed to be funny. It's so bizarre seeing a Pokemon game actually playing on my SNES. Ah, this game's like a breath of fresh air, because it showcases all the Pokemon that we've come to know and love over the years. You can see Beedrill, Porygon, Monkey, Mario Dinosaur, Poop, Abomination. What is this? Is this what happens when illicit Pokemon breeding goes unchecked? I'm looking at this from every goddamn angle there is. I can't tell where it starts and where it ends. Well, it's got a pine cone for a body. It's uh, wearing a fez. And it's got that one staring, unblinking eye that reminds you that this creature lives in never-ending, ceaseless agony. Oh, by the way, this game's pure bullshit. You can never see what's below you, so you always have to take leaps of faith that more often than not lead to your untimely demise. And it doesn't even matter how far you get. There's no checkpoint. So if you die, it's straight back to the beginning. When you drop back into the game after a death, that's you! That's an accurate representation of you saying, No, don't put me back in, please! The continue screen looks like a PSA for abused Pokemon. To me, it's as if he's laying there, wounded in the light, and a Pokeball rolls up to him, and Ash says, Keep going, Pikachu, or it's back in the ball for you. <laughs> mm, no, I don't want it! God, oh, shit! So I finally beat the first level. Boss is a Snorlax. It's pretty energetic for a Snorlax, wouldn't you say? So at the beginning of level two, you just see Ash say, it's hot? Oh, he's coming. Any minute now. Oh, there he is. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, by it's hot, he meant literally, it's a, it's a, it's a fire level. Thanks for looking out for me, Ash. I really appreciate it. 
is it Scudson? What is that? Is that Branson? Is that a, is that a tap dancing crab demon? Is that nightmare? Is that true nightmare? Strangely enough, there's another SNES Pokemon game. It's a port of Pokemon Stadium for the N64, it looks like. The biggest difference being that there's a predetermined roster of 12 Pokemon. Hmm, don't those names just look strikingly familiar? Who could forget Spia and Daggett and Rafe? It is a fully fledged game, but there's not much to say about it. I'm just baffled that it exists at all. Next up is Pokemon Adventure on the Game Boy Color. Oh man, this one looks great! It looks like a game Nintendo actually could have made. Let's do this! I'm ready to go on this balloon-based adventure with Pikachu! What? What's hap- Oh, nope! God damn- Fuck! Can I just have a break? Can I just have one break? I'm not playing this up, okay? These were my actual first moments with the game. Complete confusion. You know, this game sets up a certain special scenario for you. It says, welcome to the game. That's the one thing you can see. Fuck you. This is clearly a platformer. Why is the first enemy unkillable? Is this just a way to condition me for the journey ahead? Something you might notice is that Pikachu jumps like Sonic. He's even got those super fast spinny feet when he runs, like in Sonic 2. Oh, hey, and he even charges up in a, in a, in a ball, in, like... Sonic the Hedgehog. Yep, yeah, that's Sonic. That's Sonic. It's so it's Sonic! It turns out that this is actually a hack of an existing hack for the Game Boy Color called Sonic Adventure 7. What happened to what happened to 3 through 6? Do you even realize what this means? Ladies and gentlemen, we are playing what could be the world's very first double hack. <laughs> Warning, John. You are in danger of reaching hack capacity. Next one up's a bit weird. It's called Moemon. Eh, this one's weird. I don't know what to say about it. It's Pokemon with little girls. I mean, it's very obvious that a lot of uh, care and passion went into making this. I mean, you can actually tell which Pokemon is which by looking at those beautifully crafted sprites. But... Why? Do you realize that for this to happen, someone had to sit down, look at Pokemon, and say, you know, this is great, but it, just, it needs more little girls. I'm gonna go downstairs to my basement now, next to my little girl dungeon, and program his game. Welcome to Planet Earth, ladies and gentlemen. The next two games I want to talk about are Pokemon Diamond and Jade. Huh, I guess someone beat Nintendo to the punch with Diamond there. But, oh, this is not the Diamond version you're thinking of. Because that would be a time machine. And I know you don't have any of those laying around. In this particular instance, we know Diamond is better than Jade because Jade has a, a, a goat demon on the box. And look at it, just look at the eyes. I think there's feeling behind those eyes. Feeling a bit of, a bit of a chill. So I think I'm starting to maybe feel ghosts or something. Uh, I just want to point out that at the beginning of this Pokemon game, there's an um, armadillo on a cell phone. I mean, presumably just trying to get reception in this forest because let's face it, there's not much reception out there. <laughs> Hold on a second. Talk about rocking out with your cock out. I bet you $50. That's the guy who made Moemon back there. That's Mr. Moemon. This game is taking something completely fantastical, the world of fantasy monsters, and bringing it down to the most mundane level. He's like, did you remember to pick up the baking soda? So this game has some weird fascination with cell phones. Yeah, totally gets me in the Pokemon spirit. Oh, it's decide time. It's time to make substantial decisions about my life and career. Oh, wait, never mind. Literally just wants me to tell the time. I bet at this point you're all saying to yourselves, John, what is this shit? Get it out of my face. This doesn't look anything like a Pokemon game. Well, if that's what you were thinking, you'd be right. It is in fact a Japanese cell phone themed RPG called Keitai Denju Telefang. Okay, now get this. It means mobile phone beast. Telefang. God damn it, that was the word I wanted to know most. What in God's name is a telefang? Listen, Japan, I know this was the early 2000s, but I just can't see a series about monsters talking on telephones ever catching on. Damn it, he's nothing. Yeah, you can say that again. Now, the next one's actually one of my favorite ones. It's called Pokemon Vietnamese Crystal. Yeah, that's actually what it's called. That's racist. Now you listen here, Pip Pip, a racist mind is a racist kind. Now you, you, you take that to sleep with you tonight, because I know it's not, I'm not going to change hearts and minds in a day. You don't give a man a peanut, expect him to have a farm the next day. But it's all right. It's all right. One day, we will all be equal on this earth. Until then, I'm going to give you a kiss, Muffin.
This game is exactly as advertised. It's Pokemon Crystal for Game Boy Color, but translated to Vietnamese and sold on the street as a bootleg. Oh, but that is not what sets this game apart from the rest. What makes this one so special is the bizarre translation. Welcome! It's... Elf's World? Elf's World? Oh man, this game's bringing the nostalgia right back. How could I forget the first time I ever met Professor Oak? Oh, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, how could I have been so rude? I meant to call him by his preferred name. Elf Monster. He literally demands that not just me, but everyone call him... Elf Monster. I, I couldn't make this shit up. I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. I'm sad that I lack the talent to make this shit up. Elves. Here are called Monster. Well, that's good to know. He looks happy enough about it. They existed everywhere. Oh, that's terrible. What happened to them? They play friendly, help each other. There are many secrets inside to know these riddles. Oh, philosophy-wise, he's up there with the greats. Aristotle, Plato, Confucius, meth head down my street that forgot how to speak English from too much meth. Please check the time. Well, it was about a quarter past one. Why do you want me to do that? How many minutes? Well, I don't know, there's about 60 of them in an hour. Are we talking days? Weeks? Years? Oh, okay, looks like I gotta set the time. What F three hen time? Well, that's a fantastic question. I don't know myself. Oh, I'm, so I'm sorry. I mean, you don't gotta yell. I didn't know it meant so much to you. F three H 17 mm bad. Sleep too late. Yeah, I think I'm gonna quit here. This game's starting to judge my lifestyle. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't need that. I made it past age 18. I pay my bills. I pay my taxes. I'm gonna sleep late if I fucking want to. Fuck you. Let's get back to the real games here. Pokemon 4-in-1 on the NES. That's just so weird to me. A Pokemon game on a console 10 years older than the original game. Who thought this was a good idea? Essentially, what we've got here is just a collection of minigames based around Pokemon, three of which apparently revolve around Pika, the eating disorder which causes people to ingest inedible objects. And speaking of food, Pikachu himself looks like a, a fucking potato. Pika click, Pika slot, Pika dance, and... P p Pac-Man? That one is just called fucking Pac-Man. Okay, hold on. No, that is the only game that had a P in it to begin with. They could have just as easily called it Pika-Man, as all the others are themed with Pika. But no, they just left it Pac-Man. All right, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they didn't want the subtlety of their uh, blatant theft to be lost on the masses. Pika Click is just a game where you match blocks. I don't know what's going on with this one. I don't even know if you can lose. You can click, 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 fuck it. I don't give a shit. Pika Slot is stupid too. It's just a slot machine. Literally. It's just luck. Press the button and watch it go. The only feedback you get from this game is the win box on the right. Who would, who would, play, who would play this? Who would end it? Uh, Pac-Man. Oh, now this one's good. This one has some depth to it. Probably because it's Pac-Man. Literally, it's Pac-Man, and it changed the course of the gaming market when it came out because it's f fucking Pac-Man. Pika Dance is great. Oh, look at him go. Set to the song Butterfly by Smile DK. Where are these Pokemon going to? I think I want to head up there with them. Oh, not to mention, every single high score on this game is DDR, 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 didn't bother to hide it, DDR, didn't bother to hide it, Pac-Man, DDR, lose, 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 lose! Well, my work's done here, I'm gonna go get a goddamn glass of bootleg milk, calm my f goddamn nerves, feel like Geppetto in the goddamn Pinocchio musical. Wait a second, isn't this that version of Pokemon where the Pokemon actually die instead of faint? And it had that version of Lavender Town that caused all those Japanese kids to get mysteriously ill. Oh, uh, I should get rid of this. Well, maybe I'll just have one play. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay current with all the JonTron going ons, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. And if you want to see something else cool, just click this annotation here. It'll take you to an episode of Digino Gaming I voiced on Pokemon Science. <laughs> it was mysterious. <laughs> like the Carl Sagan of Pokemon. <laughs>